This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Welcome to The Internet Says It's True, a show where we learn something new every week, part of the WCBE podcast experience. My name is Michael Kent. Thank you so much for listening. For this week and for the next three weeks after this, I'll be featuring some episodes from the past that I've done on this podcast while I enjoy the holidays and while I have some remodeling done on the house. I wanted to take a minute to remind you that this podcast is supported by listeners like you, both by your patronage to our sponsors and through your membership to my Patreon, which you can join at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. It's the best way to support a podcast that you enjoy this holiday season. Now, today's episode was originally released as the first version of this podcast back when I was calling it Tell Me What to Google, and you'll notice some differences in the format. It was from way back on October 5th of 2020, and it originally came to us from Amy at NASA. Hey, Michael. This is Amy, and I work for NASA. I wondered if you knew about the piece of equipment that astronauts call the MAG, or the Maximum Absorbency Garment. It might be worth a Google. I think just by hearing the phrase maximum absorbency garment, I think I can guess what this is about. But I'm going to type this in and I'm going to do a Google image search. Yep, that's a diaper. Okay, (laughs) quick story. I have some very fond memories of visiting my aunt's house in Millerstown, Ohio, when I was a kid. And sitting in the kitchen, getting together with all my cousins, who we were all about the same age, And we were playing one particular record from my aunt's record collection. It was from the 60s folk singer Donovan. And the song was about using the bathroom in space. My romantic vision shattered when it was explained to me. Spacemen wear old diapers in which they sh** and pee. Oh, the intergalactic laxative will get you from here to there. The song is called The Intergalactic Laxative. And it's a comedy jig that people my parents' age know about, particularly if they were hippies or listened to Dr. Demento. Here are some of the lyrics. Wherever man has conquered on the quest for frontiers new, I'm glad he's always had to do the number one and two. It makes it all so ordinary, just like you and me, to know the greatest heroes they had to poop and pee. I've censored that last line. I probably shouldn't have been listening to this as a kid, and uh, I encourage you to go and search for the song. You'll be singing it all day, which is both hilarious and inappropriate. This episode is a classic tale of recognizing a problem and solving it. As soon as NASA started sending humans into space, they had to start solving the problem of how those humans would handle their bodily functions like they do here on Earth. So I'm going to briefly take you back to the Apollo era missions in the 1960s. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. NASA quickly figured out that in such small quarters as the Apollo capsules, the astronauts would need a way to relieve themselves. The missions back then were much shorter than today, but they still needed a way to go when nature called. For number one, they connected a small rubber cuff to themselves, and it connected to a tube to a flexible bag that was all worn under their spacesuit. Going number two was much more difficult and couldn't be utilized during launch or re-entry. Once they were in orbit, they had the ability to do so. Uh, They had the ability to use the FCS, or Fecal Containment System. It was a bag with an adhesive ring on one end that would stick to the astronaut's butt. Very rudimentary. They were given a diet that would help with the task. They called them a low-residue food or um, low-residue diets. They also contained the laxatives that our friend Donovan sung about in the earlier song. Then there was a germicide tablet they would break up into the bag, and that bag would stay on board the duration of the mission. With the liquid waste, they could actually vent it out into space, but the solid stuff, that stayed on board. It's not the best system, especially because the entire routine of removing the suit Taping a bag to your butt, doing your business, cleaning up with the included wipes, and getting your suit back on took up to like an hour to complete. Can you imagine having to drop a deuce and you got to do all that before you even can? As the space program progressed and entered the space shuttle era, they were finally able to update their methods for eliminating waste as well. In addition to that, women started entering the space program at the end of the 1970s, so they needed to be able to accommodate both male and female needs. 
the space shuttle actually had a toilet on board. Of course, this is a spacecraft, so it's not like a normal toilet like you would expect. This sucker was pressurized. They would use the toilet, and instead of water helping everything go down, there was a high-speed burst of air called a slinger that would create this crazy airflow that would help everything go down. The fans were so strong that it would actually separate the liquid waste from the solid waste. For liquid waste, they had a special funnel attachment they could use. A similar system is also now being used by males on the International Space Station. Uh, when it comes to females, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The liquid waste would then be vented into space. And former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino talked with Neil deGrasse Tyson for National Geographic about how cool it was to see a urine dump. Okay, so where does the pee go if you do it in the spacecraft? In the spacecraft, it's collected and then dumped, as, as he described. And dumped. you would want to see the, the urine dump was cool because it would, it, you would dump it and it would crystallize and the sun would shine on it and, and it was really beautiful. fun. It was, it was something I can't believe we're having a conversation. Yeah. A beautiful frozen yeah. pee in space. A urine dump. Yeah. Hey, everybody, it's a urine dump. I, I, this is, hey, it's a urine dump. And we, you know, before you hit the switch, I wouldn't go to the window and watch. <laughs> and so that's it. Then there's the issue of solid waste. Massimino explains in a different video with Wired that they had to line themselves up perfectly because the toilet opening wasn't big like it is at home. He said there was even a training booth with a camera that would the camera would look up at you and would let you know if you were lined up. So talk about getting to know your body. Holy cow. In the space shuttle, solid waste was still stored on board, but before that, before it was stored, it was vacuum dried. The whole system relied on everything to continue to work perfectly, had a series of filters and pumps that had to be continually cleaned and replaced. If not, the freeze-dried poop would create fecal dust. And if that fecal dust gets out into the air of the cabin, as soon as it hits moisture, it reconstitutes and turns back into poop. And that's exactly what happened during re-entry of STS-1, the space shuttle's very first mission. The crew was fine, they just had some toilet issues. But NASA thinks of everything, so there was a backup system. It's pretty crude, and I'll tell you all about it after a quick word about an awesome company. It's been getting colder lately, so it's been time to wear my favorite fleece jacket. It's made by Scotty Vest, and I love it because it's got a pocket for everything. It's perfect for traveling around and holding all my stuff. And when I say it's got a pocket for everything, I don't just mean it has a lot of pockets for no reason. Every pocket has its own functionality. Like there's one for my sunglasses that has a built-in lens cloth, and there's a pocket for my phone that has a clear plastic window on the inside, and there's a pocket for a wallet or passport that has RFID blocking technology. I'm not really sure what that is, but I think it's important for, like, passports. Anyway, Scotty Vest is a clothing company I believe in, and I'm confident they've got something that you'll love. The best thing you can do is take a look at all the awesome pocket-packed apparel on their website. I talked to the founder of the company a couple weeks ago. He's the Scott in Scotty Vest, and we've arranged for you to get a special percentage off your order. To get that, go to my website, theinternetsaysitstrue.com slash deals, uh, or just go to the website, click the deals link. I've also put that link in the show notes. Now, let's get back to our story. Before the break, I was mentioning that NASA thinks of everything, has contingency plans for everything. In case the toilet goes down, their backup system is called the Apollo bags. That's right, the very same system used by the Apollo astronauts were still carried on board during the space shuttle missions just in case the toilet went down. So what about during liftoff and reentry when they can't actually use the toilet? And what about spacewalks? The answer is the mag. Maximum Absorbency Garment. It's a diaper, and astronauts actually use it. The mag is worn by all astronauts, male and female, and it's a, it's a diaper. I mean, it's, a, it's essentially a diaper that they need because sometimes, like in spacewalks, they're out there for several hours. They, of course, use to the shuttle toilet right before going out, but then when they're out there, they just use the diaper, and assuming it gets used, it only needs to be changed every 8 to 10 hours. Now, you may have heard about the mag from a slightly different context in the news. In 2007, the mag gained attention because of an alleged instance of its use here on Earth. Former astronaut Lisa Nowak drove 900 miles from Houston to Orlando to attack her romantic rival. In order to avoid making stops, she allegedly wore a mag, a NASA diaper. In the media, 
had a field day with it. Nowak drove from Houston to Orlando wearing diapers. She was wearing diapers. Did she say why? She wore the diapers so that she wouldn't have to pull over during her 950 mile journey. Diapers. 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 The diapers. She wore a kind of diaper. And in a bizarre display of NASA ingenuity, diapers. It's not exactly the best way for the mag to get into the news. So that's how the space shuttle missions did it. But the International Space Station is more luxurious. It's so fancy that it has an advanced water filtration system that takes the urine on board and actually filters and recycles it into drinking water. Astronaut Jessica Meir likes to quip, yesterday's coffee is today's coffee. But how do you sit on a toilet when there's no gravity to hold you down? Well, there are foot restraints, handles, and little bars that pivot over your thighs to hold you in place. Mir says it provides the ideal body contact to make sure everything goes where it should. As I was Googling this story, a brand new story emerged. Just this week, NASA announced they'll be launching a new $23 million toilet to be used on the International Space Station. The to they're not launching the toilet up on itself. They're bringing it up with a spacecraft. I made that sound like the toilet was also a rocket. It's not. Uh, the toilet contains a brand new vacuum system, and it's said to be much more comfortable and user-friendly for female astronauts, unlike its predecessor. According to NASA, the toilet weighs 100 pounds and is 28 inches tall, which makes it 65% smaller and 40% lighter than the one currently in use. Melissa McKinley, a NASA project manager, told the BBC that the main focus of this new toilet was to make it inclusive of both male and female astronauts. She said, quote, NASA spent a lot of time working with the crew members and doing evaluations to improve the use of the commode seat and urine funnel to make it more accommodating to use by female crew members. She added, cleaning up a mess is a big deal. We don't want any misses or escapes. So there you have it. Next time you go to the bathroom, whether it be standing or sitting, just remember all the things you take for granted, namely gravity. That helps you do it. And if you ever get to that ripe old age that you have to wear a diaper, just pretend you're an astronaut and boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. It's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend and see if they already know what we just learned. Today, I'm going to call my good friend, Eric Tate. Eric is a comedy magician and the host of the Penguin Magic Podcast. We're going to see if Eric knows anything about space poop. What? Who is this? Why are you calling me? <laughs> Stop it. How are you, man? Good to see you. I, I, I'm, I'm good to see you, too. Let me ask you this question. So here's the quiz. Question number right. one. If you're an astronaut and you use a mag, what are you doing? If I'm an astronaut and I use a mag. Yeah. M -A -G. M -A -G. M -A -G. You got it. And it is an acronym. Oh, this is an acronym, not a shorthand. Right. Because I know magnets are used a lot in space. Because yeah. So Velcro is used in, in one area, where, and magnets are used whenever they're dealing with metals because they can't have stuff floating around. Uh, so uh, I want to say the M probably stands for mobile, unless it's modular. The, uh, I'll, what, I, I'll give you the M because the M won't help you. The M okay. is maximum. This is something I should know. This is something that like a former quiz show host should have in the back it, pocket. It is. This is good trivia, but it's it's nerdy, but it's also sort of. Um, Can I get a general hint trivia. as to like where it would be? Uh, in, in like, this, and are we talking? Also, are we talking uh, like uh, space shuttle type astronaut? Where like we're going to do yeah. a mission, or are we talking uh, uh, like a space station where like you're there for a while? It would be more astronaut on a mission primarily used during liftoff re-entry and maybe spacewalks as well and it's mag and the m stands for maximum yeah is this is this like um for like supplying liquids or preventing liquids from going everywhere <laughs> it is it is that is a fantastic question um I want to say a mag is like a, it's either like a diaper or a catheter type. You're thing. You're right. Ding, ding, ding. It is yeah. a, it is a diaper. Um, the mag stands for maximum absorbency garment. Okay. All right. Most, like, unnecessary acronym. 
I was so I was so close to the word absorbent. I, I yeah. was trying to figure out like because the word that kept repeating in my head was aquifer, and I was because I was like because I had because I, I I figured it was probably some. So in I know in space that dealing with liquids is uh, really perilous, right? Because because, because yeah. liquids do, do not function in microgravity the same way they do in our type of stuff, uh, like our type of gravity, and so as a result, you have to be able to dramatically absorb them so they don't end up like inside of your panels or things like that uh yeah. or uh it, 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 like liquid is a horrifying thing it's sort of like dealing with fire at sea is is like Ooh. liquid in space is the equivalent to fire at sea Good analogy, so yeah being yeah. able to deal with it in a really important way uh like a really specific and very uh precise way i think is is what i'm going for yeah. Uh, so I, I I had liquid in my brain, but I was going for aquifer, not absorbency. Well, you would have gotten the answer right if you didn't have liquid in your brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, NASA announced this week that it has spent twenty three million dollars to upgrade the ISS. Mm-hmm. What specifically is the upgrade? Oh, this week. This was a, a news story yesterday. This was a headline yesterday. Is so it they have been to, working it, on it for a while. Is it related to the Mac? It, it is, uh, yeah, it is sort of... Um, do they have a new $23 million toilet? They do, they do. Ah! $23 million toilet. And the whole purpose of this $23 million toilet is to more easily and more readily ex, uh, um, accommodate women, ac- accommodate that, female astronauts. That makes sense because they did have that issue where they couldn't have two women spacewalking at the same time because they didn't have enough suits that would accommodate them. Yeah, the suits were, were too big for the women. So they had yeah. they had a, a smaller suit. There was a, a there's a, if you Google MAG, if you Google maximum absorbency mm-hmm. garment, it talks about the company that made all of the MAGs for NASA has since gone out of business, but they made so many, a third of the original <laughs> supply still remains. That's crazy. And so imag- eventually, you know, if, if the SpaceX and NASA, um, combo eventually needs i imagine they these guys are still bob and doug are still wearing diapers just like everyone else oh yeah you know it's it's the they still have this exact same problem but the problem goes all the way back to it wasn't as big of a problem in the mercury missions because the mercury mm-hmm. missions were so short but apollo now we're talking about several days yeah and this is fine diapers work fine for number one but yeah. do you know, here's the third, this is the third question. Do you okay. know how the Apollo astronauts pooped once they were in orbit? So after liftoff, they get up there, they're weightless, they're hanging out in the capsule. How do they poop? Do they, do they crack a porthole and create a <laughs> <laughs> just, just Just get their inside um, sucked out? I would have to say, so knowing I, I've listened to a lot of interviews with Buzz Aldrin, mm-hmm. which if you've never done that, you really should, because that is one cantankerous old I, uh, expletive. I've seen the video of him punching the dude for saying that he never walked on the moon, which is fantastic. He so there's a really great podcast I listen to uh, called uh, No Such Thing as a Fish. And it's the researchers for this really great quiz show called QI and also the, the researchers for the Museum of Curiosity, which is a really great radio show on BBC Radio 4. And the, the premise of the Museum of Curiosity is that it's a radio show and they have this sort of virtual museum that anyone can donate stuff to. And they had Buzz Aldrin on and they handed him a singing birthday card. You know, you open it up and it sings happy birthday. And they were like, so that birthday card has more computing power in it than the computer that uh, you <laughs> oh used God. to land on the moon. And uh, and Buzz sort of like threw it down and was like, well, did did it fly around the moon and then come back and land? And he was like really <laughs> pissed off about this like this birthday card where they were like sure. they were like trying to illustrate something interesting. And he was yeah. like, ah, he's he's cantankerous AF as the kids yeah. say. Now, uh, the, but the, how did they? This, so, this is but, the interesting part because it, yeah. it is a very simple, uh, low tech solution they literally pooped in a bag but yeah i was so what i was getting at was i knew they didn't have a lot of space so i assumed that they would just sort of like free poop it into like a sort of controlled area and then maybe like that's exactly right if they needed to pinch it off they would like grab it from the bag or whatever (laughs) but like but that brings up a completely different topic we didn't talk too much about um the hygiene part of this or pinching it off in this podcast just for the sake of it. I'm trying to keep it somewhat clean. 
for this is yeah, this a, is a dinner know, time podcast. People usually this is the to this fifth episode, and we've already had this is the second one about poop that I've already done. But the the bag I mean, itself I think that speaks more to your the, <laughs> the guests that you bring on than you're hosting. Them maybe away. maybe uh, the 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 uh, the bag itself they called the fecal containment system because you know mm-hmm. the FCA they're all about acronyms. Uh, and it had a, a an adhesive ring on one half on one end of the bag, so Ooh. you would literally affix the ring to your butt, and <laughs> yeah, and, and just poop into the bag. And then uh, the you know it would just much like a, a MRE does for the military. It's got everything you need in there. So there's like yeah. if you need silverware, it's in there. If you needed um, in this case, if you needed like wipes, mm-hmm. when you open the the FCS, the the wipes are in there. And there's also a germicide tablet that you break and you put into there. And then you just seal the bag up, and uh, that was it. They kept it on board. Uh, would you ever wear a diaper? Like if you were, if you didn't need one for, oh, you know, yeah. like oh, yeah. for health. Like would you, if you were like an all day music festival, like say you're in like um, glass not an, or something. Not an all day music festival, but if I was going to drive cross country to confront uh, an angry lover that I had been <laughs> on a space shuttle with. <laughs> I would totally wear a diaper because that's the most efficient way to drive across country <laughs> to confront you know, my coworker slash lover. It's interesting uh, to note for the listeners that Eric has not heard the rest of this podcast uh, and, and he does not know that we just talked about this at length. The fact that you know that makes me immensely happy. And the fact that uh, whenever... I have, a, I have a Rolodex-like memory of people <laughs> who have driven co- cross country to confront their coworkers slash lover while wearing a diaper. It's just, I got it. That's at the intellectual fingertips, baby. Coworker slash fellow astronaut. That was a great story. Like I, it, it was, that, that was peak news as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, and you got to think about now, think back to what I told you about. There is a finite amount of those diapers and she mm-hmm. decided this was important enough to use at least one of them on on this uh lover's voyage what could oh. be more important than confronting a coworker slash lover and needing to do it in such an efficient manner that you would wear That's a what bag I'm curious about i think only an astronaut has that mind that they're like okay this is 900 miles i've got it timed perfectly so that if i leave now he will probably be home or she will probably be home or whatever and if they're not home uh, then that means that I have stopped for gas or I've stopped to use the restroom. So, you know, my car will only get there if I make one one gas stop. But if I add an extra two minutes to that gas stop to go in and go to the bathroom, I'm going to miss it completely, much like, you know, Apollo 13 changing course by one tick of a degree, and that makes them completely miss Earth. I think the most important thing to take away from that news story is that really... Every astronaut is a perfect blend of passion and engineering. And it is how the, it is the ratio of their passion and their engineering that determines whether or not they make it to Mars or whether or not they make it to Orlando. <laughs> well, that's a good place to stop, Eric. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. You guys can hear Eric Tate on the Penguin Magic podcast. Uh, also, look him up online. He's a fantastic comedy magician. Eric Tate, thank you so much for joining me on Tell Me What to Google, and I hope to see you soon, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I'll be back anytime. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks to Amy for the topic and to Eric Tate for being my guest. Here's a kid who once pooped in space, and that space was his pants. Thank you for listening to The Internet Says It's True. Don't forget to join up on Patreon if you want to see the unedited video of the guest appearance or to hear bonus episodes. You can do that at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. Also, if you learned something that you didn't already know from the show, please visit iTunes and leave us a review with five stars and a few words. That's the rule. You gotta do it. That helps us a ton because that's how the algorithm works to get the podcast suggested to more people. And that way we can keep learning something new if the internet says it's true. The Internet Says It's True would like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions help to make this show possible. Sean Brown, Catherine Morgan, Bryce Swanson, Eugene Anderson, Matt McVeigh, Jim Martin, Joanne Martin, Joshua Indress, and the show's official emperor, Kick Track. 
The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Boards, and additional music this week was from Trevor Garrett. All audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 U.S.C. Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. 